Well, thank you everyone for being here. I'm very happy to, to be here with you for this, uh, for this workshop about web, web pen testing. So first I'm going to introduce myself a little. Uh, I'm an offensive security consultant uh, for Desjardins, which is a, a financial cooperative in North America. And on the side, I'm part of the Sinac Artemis Red Team um uh, well i'm not going to uh, stay too long on this you can follow me on social media you can uh, see my blog here and uh, i can send you the link in the chat afterwards if you need okay i'm gonna start right away so uh before i tell you about my journey uh, so you will see on the screen a definition of the educational science concept on which I based my program to become a pen tester. So uh, as, I, as I mentioned in my presentation, I, I'm a blogger, but I will take some time to um, tell you how uh, this blog became a, a personal brand for me. So for the record, uh, I studied literature to become an actress before, but uh, I've always been uh, passionate about uh, computers. So. Um, 10 years ago, I turned this passion into a job by becoming an application developer. And, um, you know, even if I liked uh, this job very much, I was uh, morally torn because of the security of the application I was delivering. Um, because at the time, as a developer, you, well, we, we were not really responsible for the security of what we were creating. And so uh, that's why I started to get interested in cybersecurity and that's how I discovered Pentestic. And uh, for practical and economical reason, I trained myself to become a pen tester and that's how I documented it on a blog. So the goal of this blog was to uh, get hired as a pen tester. So, you know, it's true that it was a risk because it, you know, it's outside of the traditional model, but a risk is part of any project. So. And uh, so to build my program, I released on, I relied on the education concepts I have, uh, that you see on the screen. And I'm going to change it now. So I uh, drew inspiration from academic programs and I compared them with skills mentioned in job postings and this concept that is inspired by lifelong learning allowed me to create a path in six steps. Uh, so CTF, conferences, tutorials, internships, summer schools, and volunteering. So CTF, uh, I don't know if everyone is familiar with, what, uh, with the CTF, but it's basically uh, cybersecurity challenges. Uh, and so the, it, you can do it in team. There are also CTF platforms. And so it's basically, uh, I, I did CTF, you know, to learn by doing. Uh, the conferences part was to have different point of view and approach uh, cybersecurity from all angles. And MOOCs and tutorials were to support the practice of CTF with theory. And summer school was to have contact with the um, academic and professional world and meet experts in the field. And volunteering was to meet other cybersecurity enthusiasts. And finally, the internship was to put all this learning into practice. So to this program, I added an analysis grid of skills to uh, list the skills that I obtained from my previous position and that would apply um, to the cybersecurity field. So for example, when I was a receptionist, uh, I, I got the sense of details, anticipation, and confidentiality. And so these are skills that are uh, totally applicable to, um, to the cybersecurity field. So uh, now let's find out how uh, cybersecurity teams are organized. So uh, you probably know in cybersecurity, we mention blue team and red team. And so these teams, they work together to make uh, the cyberspace safer. So the members of a red team are offensive security professionals experts, and so they are experts in attacking uh, systems and in uh, intruding uh, systems. 
And in blue team, they are the defensive security professionals responsible for defending against uh, cyber attacks and threats. And uh, recently, we have seen the emergence of the notion of uh, purple team, which is a mix of red and blue practices. So this can be done in the form of one-off collaborative exercises between the blue team and the red team. But sometimes, some companies will add a team dedicated to this model. So uh, in this case, the team's objective will not be to measure the um, effective net um, well, it will be to, to measure the um, effectiveness of, of the control and see if the defense mechanisms are in place and, uh, you know, many different things. So they are uh, sometimes uh, brought to perform uh, ad hoc tests with the defense teams or tests dedicated to testing a specific defense element and uh, see if it's robust enough. So there are also uh, different uh, professions you can do in uh, these teams like uh, uh, for uh, for example in the red team we find the pen tester that i will present a little later uh, in more detail and for the blue team we, we find the CISO uh, uh, which is a person who will be responsible for the security strategy and the protection of the data of a company and also uh, uh, as we see uh, the purple team that is coming uh, we also have a new position uh, specific to this team, such as purple team operator who closely collaborate with um, red and blue teams. So uh, there are different axes uh, for this collaboration between all these teams. So for example, when we uh, prepare a pen test, there's a meeting that is organized around the project during this meeting, the CISO, who is responsible for the project will draw up a list of uh, specific risks to solution. So from this list, the pen tester will be able to focus um, uh, their test. And uh, so there are also uh, collaboration exercises between the blue team and the red team and where the objective of the red team is going to get into the system without being detected by the blue team. And so at the end of the exercise, the two teams will meet and review the attack scenario together and see what worked and what we did, did not work. But um, what does it take to uh, work into one of these teams? So we are going to see uh, the different skills. So for a blue teamer, uh, there is the leadership, which is to be able to present uh, their point of view as a security expert to the different team. Also, uh, vulgarization to be able to explain to different profiles. Uh, diplomacy sometimes to be able to choose uh, the right compromise between usability and security. Um, analytical skills to know how to analyze a project and secure it. Uh, teamwork to work on security with uh, the different roles in a project. And writing skills uh, to write the documentation related to the security of a project. It's also uh, uh, the same for uh, for red team for mostly uh, pen test reports if you're a pen tester for example so for a red teamer you have to to be curious so you have to know uh, how to question everything and to imagine different types of possible attacks you have to be creative to know how to get off the beaten track and uh, adapt to all projects and situations to be tested uh, you have to be perseverant because not everything works the first time. Uh, I mean, in a pen test, uh, there is a, there can be a long period of frustration before something works. So you don't you don't have to get discouraged. You just have to keep on working on it. Uh, you have to also be organized because, as I will uh, mention later, there are you know specific uh, steps for a pen test, and you have to have the desire to learn. And it's also the same for blue team. Uh, technologies evolve very, very quickly, and you have to constantly update yourself. And also, because it is a very, very vast field, there are also many things to know. So let's dive into ethical hacking. So uh, if you look up the definition of a hacker, unless you go to a specialized website, you are going to find a pejorative definition. 
you will find terms like snoop, for example, and there will be the notion of illegality. But uh, basically, if you base yourself on the MIT definition of a hacker, uh, someone, um, um, uh, a hacker is someone who um, hijacks the use of a tool to do something else. So it's someone who is going to be curious about how a system works. So as you might know, there are different types of hacker. We have white hat, we have gray hat, and we have black hat. Black hat will uh, do this for personal gain or political reasons. White hat will uh, have to find vulnerabilities legally for organization and businesses. And gray hat is going to be a mix of both. So they are going to uh, search for vulnerabilities and notify the owner afterwards, for example. So it is still going to be legal, but uh, we see more and more businesses and governments putting in place uh, responsible disclosure policy. So recently, for instance, the uh, Quebec government put uh, on a platform for, uh, for responsible disclosure. So what is a pen test? Uh, so you can see a definition on the screen, but if we want to go into more details, we can say that a pen test allows us to identify flows at the application layer, networks and system, as well as the possibilities of compromising a physical security barrier. So now I'm going to present uh, the different types of pen test. So external pen test, uh, so this is when we are going to try to break into the target system from the outside of the network. And so there are going to be different methods for doing that. So for example, we can try to find out uh, if an administration interface of the target company system is available uh, from the internet. So let's say you are the employees of a company uh, called X, for example, and you have to use an application to take your holidays. So if the login page of this application is available on the internet, it could be hacked and this will expose sensitive data. So uh, what will I will do as a pen tester is that I'm going to try to connect to this application and this will give us uh, a first access in the client's network. So there's also a vulnerability assessment. So we will use an automatic scanner to scan our customer system. So it is not a pen test, so to speak, because a pen test is an audit that uses the tools and more importantly, the expertise of a cyber professional. So uh, it will avoid, uh, avoid false positive, which is uh, uh, unlike vulnerability assessment because uh, it's automatic. So there's also internal pen tests. So it's when you are going to attempt to break into a system from inside the customer network. So once you are, for example, once you are at the customer's location, you are going to connect with an Ethernet cable, for instance, and you are going to try to become network administrator. And an administrator has all the access on the system. So it's as if someone would manage to steal the personal data of all the people working in the company. So we, uh, for Wi-Fi test, we are going to check uh, Wi-Fi security. So is it easy to connect? We are going to check if the Wi-Fi password is strong enough, if the technology used are reliable, because some technologies are depreciated because they were found to be vulnerable. And a secure Wi-Fi will avoid that, uh, you know, a cyber criminal will look legitimate in a network like any other person. So we have phishing attack. So I, I really like this gift. <laughs> so there's also uh, social engineering. Sometimes uh, companies are going to offer a phishing campaigns. And so we are going to do what an attacker would do and uh, we'll be able to find uh, how many people read the email and how many clicked on the link. And as a result, the company will put in place a better awareness policy. Uh, sometimes companies will uh, will uh, say to um, to their employees. So if you clicked uh, on the link too many times, you will have you will have to do some training or things like this. So there's also a physical intrusion. So it's a very important aspect of cybersecurity. Uh, it gives a global view. 
But uh, because if you have access, for example, to a server room or a safe or a computer, it definitely has an impact on the cybersecurity of the target. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to try to break into a building. And so we can either make scenarios to try to manipulate people to let us in or break in at night, for example. And we will have a target to reach in the building. So if you want an example, I made an article on my blog called Codename 2300, which is about one experience I had of a physical pen test. And during this uh, experience, we, we stayed all night long on the premises. <laughs> like we, we walked in the corridor of the company for the whole night and uh, we, we were able to reach our targets. And uh, you know, it was a, a once in a lifetime experience. So I made a blog about it, obviously. I'm going to share the link afterwards in the chat. So um, what is denial of service? Denial of service happens when too many people try to access an application at the same time. So the application will become unavailable. So we have different attacks that can lead to a denial of service. And so, uh, we are going to test them to evaluate the resistance of the system to denial of service attack. There's one small thing that uh, uh, you need to know is that for a pen test, because we usually, well, we often uh, uh, test in production environments, uh, we uh, uh, denial of service tests are uh, most of the time forbidden, but sometimes customer will ask specifically for uh, this kind of attack. So there's also a red team, which I talked briefly a little before. So the goal of a red team will be mainly to check uh, the ability of a company to detect attacks rather than uh, focusing on finding a lot of vulnerabilities. So it's really based on uh, how do you react uh, uh, and how, uh, like how fast are you to detect an attack. And there is web. So, uh, you know, we are trying to access uh, sensitive data. We are going to try to become an administrator. We are going to use the most common black hat attacks. So for instance, SQL injection, which is an attack that will um, allow us to get information from the database. And uh, the database contains all the information that we need to run an application. But there will be, this will be more explained in details more uh, later. So what are the steps of a pen test? So uh, there are different phases. You know, we don't go uh, straight to the attack phase. Uh, we need to plan it with the customer. We have to define the scope, take care of the legal matters. And so this is called the planning phase. Then uh, we have to uh, gather information about the target. How does it work? What are the technologies? So this is called the discovery phase. And after we attack the target, we take many notes in the process and we get our proof. And so this is the attack phase. And finally, we produce a report with explanations on how to reproduce the flow and how to correct it. So we have also uh, different methodologies in a pen test. So we have black box. So in a black box, Pen test, the uh, pen tester is going to be placed in the role of an average cyber criminal. So uh, they will have no internal knowledge of the target system. So te testers uh, will have uh, uh, no information um, except those that are going to be publicly available. So in this, the a black, box, black box pen test story will uh, determines the vulnerabilities in a system that uh, would be exploitable from outside of the target. So for gray box pen test, the tester will have access uh, and knowledge levels of the user, so potentially with elevated privilege on the system. And for a white box, uh, they will have full access, full access to source code, full access to architecture documentation, uh, every information that is relevant is going to be given to them. And so this is a long test, but it will cover uh, every aspect of the target. So what uh, does a day look like? So uh, 
uh, we have to first uh, we have to uh, warn the customer that our tests are starting so that if the blue team see uh, something unusual uh, they know it's us uh, sometimes uh, we have calls to prepare a new project and also we can have meetings with uh, the team to talk about our projects and how to be more efficient in our work but of course the majority of the time i will test and uh, write reports uh, my responsibilities can take multiple forms. So for example, before each job, and sometimes depending on the mandate and also depending on the companies, it really depends on a lot of things, but we are going to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which will uh, guarantee the confidentiality uh, of uh, what we do. And also, uh, I, I really want to insist that the relationship between a pen tester and his uh, customer is trust. So for example, before a test, during the preparation phase, uh, we have defined what is called uh, the rules of engagement. So we have to stay within the scope and not attack an element that is not there. And so this document is essential for a pen tester because it is what legally proves that they are not a cyber criminal. So uh, if you want to do pen tests on the side or things like this, uh, you, it's really important that you uh, get this document. So uh, now we are going to dive into practice with the example of web pen testing. So as you know, web pen test is a type of pen test. And so, you know, now every organization or business have a website. So uh, those websites can be a nest of uh, vulnerabilities. So in order to keep people safe, you can help them by testing their website. And so in this example, I'm going to uh, present some web vulnerabilities and tools and uh, talk about what I have seen in real context. And then we will go further with a, a rem remote code execution. And there will be also a little uh, quiz and some exercise. So, uh, as you probably know, uh, OWASP is a nonprofit foundation that aims to improve the security of web applications. So, they have a top 10 of the most found vulnerabilities that you can see on the screen. And uh, we will talk later in details about SQL injection, cross site scripting, and directory traversal. So I chose to demonstrate those because they are very visual. So it's really, you know, we, I, I feel like we grasp a better understanding this way. And um, let's go to the next slide. So these are the tools I use for the demo. So, um, uh, I installed the uh, Mutilide via Metasploitable 2. You can also install uh, Mutilide alone on a web server if you prefer, but this is a vulnerable app, so you have to be careful with this. And also, before I show you the demo, um, I, please be aware that you always need to have the authorization of the owner of a website to test the system, otherwise it's going to be illegal. And the machine I used in the demo are made for this for, for this specific purpose. Uh, so uh, anyone uh, does, um, I have a little question. Uh, how many of you have already seen a web attack? Like, can you in the chat, uh, tell me if she, some of you, if I find the chat again somewhere, <laughs> if uh, some of you have um, already seen web attacks and everything. Uh, Yeah, me, no, yes, I have seen folks are, are writing in the chat. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have some no. Okay, I can share a little my screen for a few minutes. Um, I mean, another window. Uh, okay, so this is just an example, but I feel like uh, let's try with uh, this. Oh. So usually when we have um, an application to test, 
Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find a lab because I want it to be okay. Ah, oh, it's academy. <laughs> okay, perfect. All labs up. Okay. So uh, let's say here. Okay. So this is part sugar. We, we, we are going to use it later for the exercise. But I wanted to um, show you a little quickly the process. So when we have an application, we can try many different things. So you know, we just navigate and we click on view details, for example, here. Uh, we see if there are uh, inputs where we can put text or write things. Uh, we see if there is a way to log in. You know, there's some checks that we could do. And so this is, you know, the curiosity I was mentioning. We really have to uh, observe a little and see different things and also, when we are using tools like Burp Suite, we can uh, see also how does it work and everything. And so that's a way to uh, to uh, to see uh, the first time you you get the web page and you have to test it. This is some way to do it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this quickly so that you have an idea and everything for those who have never seen a web vulnerability before. Okay, so what you will see in the demo, uh, so these vulnerabilities uh, and uh, also uh, the um, tools, but first I want to give some more explanation on these vulnerabilities and these tools so that you have a better understanding for the video. So uh, First one is cross-site scripting. So it's also known as XSS, and it is a security vulnerability that is typically found in web applications. So it's a type of injection which can allow an attacker to um, execute malicious uh, script and have it execute on a victim machine. So with cross-site scripting, you can try to uh, steal the admin cookie. You can also try to get complete control over a browser you can exploit a vulnerable plugin, you can uh, perform keylogging. And so this would mean that you are able to uh, record every input that is made on a keyboard. So SQL injection, uh, they happen when an application uses a user controlled input to create SQL queries without properly validating the input first. So a successful SQL injection attack will be able to, uh, well, will, it will allow us to read or modify sensitive data from the database, for example. We could also execute administration operations on the database, like maybe shutting it down. And in some cases, we will be also able to issue commands on the operating system. Um, directory traversal is a vulnerability that allows an attacker to uh, read arbitrary file on the server. And uh, so with this attack, you are going to be able to get um, application code, to, uh, data credentials for backend systems, sensitive operating system files. And in some cases, you can even be able to write arbitrary files on the server, and this would allow us to uh, modify uh, the application data or behavior. And the ultimate goal of this attack will be to uh, take control of the server. But it's, it's the goal of uh, most at web attacks. It's uh, really getting control of the server. So the tools we are going to uh, see in the demo are going to be Burp Suite and Derp, but uh, Burp Suite is a proxy tool. And so the main goal is going to be to intercept, analyze, and modify queries. And so as we are going to navigate through the target application, the proxies will detect potentially vulnerable elements and we will be able to analyze them and validate if they are indeed vulnerable. So uh, other proxy tool would be uh, also OWASP ZAP. Uh, also 
of the feathers. So uh, a feather is a tool like there that is used to send a series of code snippet or text. So we could try to uh, breakfast administration pages. We can also try to uh, breakfast an authentication form. And we can also uh, try to list the directory of a website with a predefined list of words. Uh, this is called directory busting. Gabrielle, before you move on, it looks like we have a question in the chat. Yeah, sure. Let me see this. Oh. Uh, chat. Uh, is an ex injection exploitation still common today, or is this more of a problem most uh, modern businesses have to protect themselves again? Uh, no, we see we still see this today. Uh, it's not uh, the first on the top 10, but it's still the third one on the top 10 of OWASP. So we definitely uh, see it uh, today again. Okay. So let's dive into the demo. Uh, but please, if you have uh, any question, feel free to ask them away. Um, this is, you know, uh, interactive. <laughs> okay, so the first one we are going to see, I'm just going to make sure that this is a high quality and put it a little faster. The first one we are going to see is uh, the stored cross-site scripting. So uh, this one, uh, so this is the application uh, Mutilide I mentioned. So it's, uh, you know, really made for practice uh, OWASP top 10. So this is an, uh, an example of a, a blog. So uh, for instance, I'm able to uh, write something here and it's going to, be, to stay in the database, but I can try to uh, inject some code. Okay, and so I'm going to save this. And see here, uh, this should not have happened. I, I, I'm the one who uh, triggered the alert here. Okay, so this is definitely something uh, that should not happen. So this is just, you know, a way uh, to demonstrate that we are uh, actually having cross-site scripting here. But uh, we, for you know, getting the administrator cookie, we will do we will use another payload. But this one is the, usually the one we use as an evidence for our pen test. So see here, uh, nothing is uh, nothing is shown here. It's because uh, the code has been interpreted, and I didn't put any text before the code. But we can dive in. Uh, we can actually inspect this uh, specific part. And see, it's exactly as if, so our, our code is here and it's exactly as if the web developer made it so that uh, it would uh, be a native, but it's not. Okay, so the next one is SQL injection and we are going to uh, bypass authentication. Okay, so this is here. The two dash here are going to uh, comment the rest of the query. So this way, the password will not be checked. So of course, I should not be able to do this either, except uh, I can do it and we are now uh, logged in as admin. Okay, so uh, this is just an example. We are not always logged in as admin with uh, this kind of uh, injection. But uh, this is just an example. And so now for a uh, directory traversal. Uh, so there is in the, uh, you are, you, as you can see here in the URL, there is a parameter page. And uh, this parameter is using a vulnerable PHP function. And so, um, we are able to uh, get to query for, um, it's not really query, but to get files from the server this way. So this one is the slash etc slash pass wd. So these are not passwords, so to speak, but they are uh, mostly um, 
users or uh, or so it's definitely something I should not be able to access. And so this is um, one example, but we could also try to get SSH keys. We could try to get many different things uh, or files. And so this is specifically for, uh, uh, so this is a file that is present on Linux server. So if it were a Windows server behind, uh, I would not get anything using this payload. I would have to use another payload. So uh, burp sweep. So this is the proxy tool I mentioned. So uh, I just put my intercept on on. And so this way, when I'm going to interact with the website, I'm going to be able to intercept the queries and you know modify things in it. Like so, for example, I'm going to check the home page here, uh, see if I can modify. Like, just like we did before uh, for pass traversal or you know any other injections. Uh, do something here, uh, try to tamper with the UID. For example, uh, if I had, uh, instead of admin here, if I had user, I would try to put admin and see if I get something this way. You know, really different things we can try out here. And so uh, we can either forward the request, we can drop it, or uh, uh, we can do many things. It's really, um, this is just a very small overview of Burp because there are so many things uh, we can do uh, with it. And it's like a tool we use on a daily basis on a pen test uh, when we do web pen test. So this one is there. So what I'm doing here is, uh, so this is our target. And at the end of the URL, it's going to take every word from this word list and append it. And so this way, we are going to be able to see if a page, a specific page exists. So for instance here, uh, we have an index.php. So this is basically okay. This is the landing page, but uh, the PHP, my admin here page uh, should not be available to us. Uh, this is like, uh, this is going to be a login form and this will give me access to, um, administration of the application. So I should not be able to have access to this. So when I when I get this kind of pages with a login form like this PHP may admin, I'm going to try to uh, log in and to uh, see what I can do with it, if I can get information if, and if I can uh, ultimately access uh, the server. So the last thing uh, I wanted to show you is uh, uh, to explore Kali Linux. It is a distribution of Linux specifically made for pen testing. And so it comes with a lot of uh, interesting tools for pen tests and for many different types of pen tests, not only, um, not only um, web pen test. Okay, next slide. So now we are going to go a little further now that we have seen some web vulnerabilities because I want to introduce you to a remote code execution. So uh, first I'm going to present some tools you need to get familiar with for, uh, for testing remote code execution. So uh, Netcat, uh, it's often abbreviated to NC. It's a computer networking utility that is used uh, to read um, or and write to network connection using TCP or UDP. And so the command is designed to be a dependable backend that can be used uh, directly or easily driven by other programs and script. Uh, also, you have to be able to uh, use a search engine uh, or most of the time it's going to be to research specific vulnerabilities or uh, to research for a shell or for a web shell, and, or, but you can also write them yourself if you feel comfortable with this. But uh, there's a, a ton of uh, shell available online. And then you have to have uh, uh, an understanding of uh, web vulnerabilities. So what is uh, remote code execution? So um, code injection, which is also called remote code execution, happens when an attacker exploits an input validation flow in a software. 
to uh, introduce and execute malicious code. So uh, code is going to be injected in the language of the targeted application. So for, for example, in our uh, video before it was PHP. And it's going to be executed by the server side interpreter for that language. So uh, then a reverse shell is a shell session that is going to be established on a connection that is initiated from a remote machine, so not from the local host. And so attackers who successfully exploit a code injection vulnerability uh, can use a reversal to obtain an interactive shell session on the target machine and uh, continue their attack. So uh, there are also famous uh, examples of uh, remote code execution. I mean, on famous system, like uh, we have WhatsApp and uh, WordPress here. So for, for example, in WhatsApp, uh, this CVE was uh, about a function in the Android GIF drawable library that was used in WhatsApp and so many other Android applications. And this would allow uh, remote attackers to execute arbitrary um, code. <clears throat> sorry, or cause denial of service when the library was used uh, to parse a speci specifically uh, crafted image. And so in WordPress, this was done through a pass traversal. So an attacker who had privilege to crop an image could uh, write the output image in, um, um, in to an arbitrary directory. Okay, so, <laughs> Why can this happen? So if we talk in a web context, uh, remote code execution can be exploited if um, user input is injected into a file or a string and uh, executed by the programming language parser. So if we take the famous example of the file upload functionality, which is uh, when, we, when we actually have an, a web application to test, we will, um, a lot of the time, we will uh, hunt for this kind of functionalities to see, uh, to check if they are um, properly implemented. So in this case, uh, a classic user will use it to uh, download the chosen image. And so it will uh, be, you know, the intent use, but uh, a pen tester uh, will try to download a shell and take control of the server. So let's have a look uh, of uh, remote code execution in, in context. So I'm going to put this again bigger and in good quality. And uh, maybe a little faster too. Okay. So this is uh, another application from uh, a multi metasprite table too. So here, uh, this is a, a form that is uh, supposed to uh, ping an IP address. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is, what I did here is that I entered uh, a, a, an IP address, but just after it, I um, put a semicolon and uh, uh, I did a command ls, which is a, a Linux command to list directories. And so the, the ping worked, of course, but my uh, command work as well. I have a, a list of the files here. So this is a command execution. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we have command execution. Uh, how can we, uh, so next step is going to have a, a reverse shell. So it turns out that uh, we have the uh, possibility to upload, uh, like we have this file upload functionality that I mentioned before. So we can, we can take this. Uh, so this is what I was mentioning before when I said you have you, you have plenty of uh, reverse shell available online. So 
uh, and this one is actually pre pre installed on Kali, so you can uh, fetch it from your uh, files in Kali. And so here you will have to change. Oops, sorry. You will have to change the IP address. So you will have to put your IP address and a port, and then you will uh, be able to. Uh, so here, I just put my IP address and uh, a, a port of my choice, a uh, free port. And then I just have to set a listener with netcat. And this way, so I'm going to put the PHP file and upload it. And uh, luckily for us, it's, it, it tells us where the file is actually uploaded, but uh, this is really, uh, this does not happen all the time. Like we are really lucky for this one. I mean, this is for educational purpose. So it's, I mean, easier. And so we have a shell. We are actually uh, on the web server. So we are basically able to, uh, like we have control of the server here. Okay, so this should not happen again. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, next video is um, a video I made using uh, magic on Hack the Box. So, uh, when you work on Hack the Box, there is a full process of information gathering that you will not see here because the purpose of the video is to show you. Um, specific things on your subject matter of today so that you can get a basic understanding of, uh, you know, more complex way than the previous uh, video to get a reversion and what to do once uh, you actually get a shell. So, up. Uh, same thing with the quality and the speed. Okay, so first things we had to do was to bypass authentication with a SQL injection. So we had this page on the uh, port 80 of the target. And so we did the, the, the payload we used before in our example. And uh, this way we were able to bypass authentication and log in. So now we have to upload a shell. Uh, we have this. Uh, uh, by, by bypassing the authentication, we are able to uh, have access to the, this file upload functionality. And so what I'm doing here is, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, the uh, reverse shell uh, is already available on Kali. So I just had to uh, copy it and put it in my working directory. So CP is going to copy it for us. And so it's in my working directory now. And I just need to open it and make the changes with the IP address and, uh, and the port. So here is my IP address. And we can change it. Okay. And I can just, uh, I have put four, 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 four here. And then I can uh, put my, my listener. So I'm going to, okay, first thing is taking it on the target. But uh, so it's not working. So this is what I was saying when I was saying uh, it can be more challenging. It's not working because we are uh, trying to upload a PHP file and there's a check that is made here uh, because it's asking for an image. But uh, luckily for us, this is uh, totally by bypassable. <laughs> Sorry for the accent. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting uh, the image from uh, Hack the Box, uh, just to have an image file. And, and this way um, I can uh, have 
you know, a valid image to use it. So just like here. And I'm going to, uh, so what this, uh, so I'm just going to show the full comment here. Okay, so what this is doing here is it's going to print out the content of the test.php file and append it in the image file. So our uh, reverse shell is going to be in our image file. Okay, so we could try this way. And uh, this time I'm going to set up uh, my listener. So this is the thing you have to not forget because uh, it won't work if you don't set up your listener, obviously. Okay, and I have to put the correct part as well. Okay, <laughs> it's working. And uh, so we have the file here. That so the file has been accepted. Okay. And uh, we can try to access it. But uh, we do not get anything. It's, it's not working. Okay, so we have to be, uh, we have to try something else. Okay, so you see here, I have my PNG and my uh, PHP file. So what I can do is uh, change the extension of the PH, of the, the image file. So, oops, sorry, just going to go a little before here. So here, what I do is that I put php.png so that the, uh, on the client side, it will see that it's a PNG but uh, the server is going to see the PHP and it's going to execute it as a PHP file. Okay, so now I can fetch my file. And we get a shell. Okay, so usually in Axobox, when we get initial foothold, uh, we are not always users. So sometimes you have to get the user. Uh, and uh, so this, this was the case here. So the thing we had to do was to look around and uh, this way we found uh, a password in the uh, SQL files. So this is how uh, we are able to uh, grant ourselves uh, just user privilege, which are um, not root privilege, but we have more privilege than if we were uh, uh, the, the initial wizard we got here. Okay, so one thing here is uh, I'm going to try, I'm just going to go back a little before. Hop, hop, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, add a public key in the in target, you know, as an authorized key so that it's going to be our public key. And so this is going to allow us to have a persistence on the target. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm... Have, so this is my machine. This is my attacking machine. So I'm uh, taking my public key and I am putting it in a file uh, called authorized keys. I, uh, I'm taking this file from my machine to the target. So uh, to do this, I just use a Python uh, simple uh, HTTP server. So this is my IP address, and this is the port where the server is hosted. And this way I can get the file on the target. And then I just need to move the file to the ECSH folder. 
And then I should be able using my key to connect to the target with SSH. So I won't have to do the whole process again of uh, downloading an image and uh, uh, and getting a reversion and everything. I just I, I will just need have to uh, to SSH to the target. And it works. Okay. So uh, what's next after this? So we have we, we do have some control, but we do not have full control. We are uh, user privilege. We don't have a uh, root privilege or super admin. So the next step of what we just saw in the demo would be to uh, to do what, what is called privilege escalation. So uh, this will uh, be becoming an admin. In Linux, it's called a uh, root user. So uh, we are going to use the example of uh, magic again to show how we can escalate. Uh, so there's, uh, if you want a more uh, detailed process for the, the box, because uh, as I mentioned, it's really, I just wanted to focus on a few things here, but th there's a whole process. You, there's this YouTube channel that has it. Uh, I, I will share it afterwards with you on the chat. Okay. So first we had to enumerate ways to uh, elevate our privilege. So we can do this manually, but there's also um, scripts that can do it for us. Like it's basically going to do all the command we would have done manually. Uh, this one is called Linux Smart Enumeration, but there are many other. We also have uh, a LinPs. And so here I'm going to use uh, a Python uh, HTTP server to uh, get this file on the target. So I'm going to w get it with my uh, with my HTTP server. Okay, so I'm just getting it on the target, and then I just have to uh, add to make it executable. Uh, we can do uh, chmod755 or we can do chmod plus x. Oops. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> and then we can execute it. And so this is going to um, list a lot of possible ways, you know, uh, based on the settings, based. So we will have then, we will just have to analyze and find uh, with these informations, find a way to uh, escalate our privilege. So, uh, sysinfo uh, is the command that we are going to use. Uh, this is a command that uh, will uh, return information about the system. And uh, this command here on this target is actually using uh, uh, those commands here. So fdisk, cat, free, and lshw. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to create our own uh, fdisk program because uh, the sysinfo command has uh, root uh, rights. And so it's going to launch this command as root. So this is how we are going to be able to elevate. So what I did is that uh, I did an fdisk, uh, a file called fdisk and uh, this is going to uh, send me a, a shell to my target, to my uh, attacking machine from the target. So this is my IP address, and this is the port I'm going to be listening on. 
also, we have to change the path variable so that we say to uh, sysinfo to check for this program in this new path. So this will be uh, the current path here. And then we just have to set our listener. And we can launch the sysinfo command. And we have a shell as root. So we, we did elevated our privilege. So that's how we escalate our privilege. Gabrielle, just to know that there's a question in the chat and yeah. what was asked was, are you going to show bind shell as well? Uh, not today. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, uh, but uh, I mean, we, we don't have much time. Okay, so how to uh, mitigate? So um, we have to validate and sanitize the input when, uh, you know, uh, when, as a dev, as a developer, you always have to be careful with the inputs. You don't you you cannot trust uh, any input that is made. Uh, you cannot trust a user. So uh, any input that is available made available to a user has to be sanitized. Uh, also, be careful of the function you use. Uh, some functions are vulnerable, like the one we saw in the directory traversal example. And uh, as I just said, treat all data as untrusted. So. Uh, uh, a quick tip to remember is uh, is using X files, which is uh, trust no one. <laughs> and also um, audit the security of your web app before deploying it. So uh, hire a pen tester to test them and uh, follow the standard recommendation when developing a web application like the OWASP recommendation. There's a, a whole lot of documentation for developers and there's also uh, documentation for pet tester on how to uh, you know uh, hack but there's also for web developer on how to uh, make your app secure and safe okay so how do we report our findings um, the, so so we, uh, we did uh, the the whole phases we did the rediscovered phases we did the attack phases with the, the, the evidence and everything. So now we have to do the report phase. So the executive summary is the part where uh, you need to explain for the executive of the company. So it's this part right here. And uh, there are going to be um, high level explanations with no technical details. It's going to contain a global posture that explain why uh, the findings and attack combination could impact the company. Okay, uh, then the vulnerability report uh, will have uh, all the elements you see on the screen. So the severity in one word, which is usually low, medium, high, or critical. Uh, the CVSS score or OWASP risk rating score, it really depends on the preference of the company you're working for or your preference if you're working on your own. Uh, and the details of the affected team, and also a detailed explanation on uh, with technical details this time on how uh, the flow can be reproduced. And also after this, an explanation on how to correct it, which will often be used by the blue team to apply patches or by the uh, developer of the project. And uh, a screen capture or uh, a request or a, rips, a response, anything that could be an evidence of the exploitation you were able to conduct. Okay, so that's it for the report. I'm going to share some uh, things that I've seen in real context. Uh, so um, I have seen a lot of cross-site scripting. So once I had to test uh, this website, and it was globally very well implemented, but there was this feature of uh, file upload. And um, so this was designed to be able to download HTML files. 
So what I did is that I built an empty uh, HTML file and I, I did the um, cross-site scripting payload I showed earlier. And that was it. That was uh, proved uh, how I was able to uh, show that there was an XSS. Uh, I have seen some SQL injection as well. So for example, uh, the tool where we usually use to dump database called SQL map uh, was not able to find the injection. So I could not dump the database automatically. So uh, we found a SQL function that could show the last request that was made uh, to the database. And this was a Boolean based SQL injection. So we had to check every child one by one to find the request. It was quite long. And uh, so we made a script that ran all night long and we only got part of the request because it was like a um, thousand child long. But this was enough to uh, you know, prove that uh, this was vulnerable to SQL injection. And also, I also have seen strange behaviors in applications. So for example, uh, once I had to test this website, but when the session was expiring, it would redirect me to a connected session of the administration tool of the website. So I was very, very surprised. Okay. Uh, so that's it for the example. And now it's going to be time for a little fun with a Kahoot quiz. I'm going to share the link with you here. Yep. So uh, you have to go on your browser to this URL here. And then uh, you have to use, I'm going to start this, okay. Up, it's classic mode. Okay, there's going to be, it's going to be asking for a pin. Oops, let me mute this. Okay, perfect. So you have to enter this pin and uh, nice. Okay, people are already joining. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Kahoot quiz. Uh, so basically the questions are going to be showed on my screen and you will have to answer in your browser. Okay. Oh, we have lots of people joining. Okay, let me check how many we are to see 34 people. Okay, so I'm going to wait a little for everyone to connect. You don't have to connect. You, you can pay if you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> also about the bind shell question, uh, I can provide you with some resources if you want uh, about it uh, at the end. Just uh, feel free to uh, send me a, a DM and I will, uh, uh, after, after the workshop, I will send you some resources about it if you, if you want to know more. Okay, <laughs> we have people <laughs> changing their their avatar. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have fourteen people. I'm going to wait one more minute. Okay, so the game pin is uh, the the thing you have to enter in your browser. So you have to click on the Kahoot. A link I, I, I shared in the chat and then you have to enter the pin it's going to ask for which is on the on the screen uh, I can cop I think I can actually copy it uh, okay uh, sorry I should have done this before it would have been easier for you uh, there you go. So you just need to copy this and paste it to your browser.
Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was helpful. Like two people just joined. Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna wait a little more and then we are going to go. Okay, people, let's do this. So I'm gonna start this. So um, just to recap, you are going to see the questions on the screen and you will have to type the answer on the browser. So it can be a little, um, you know, uh, intimidating at first because you have, but do not forget to watch the screen. This is where you will have the question. Okay, perfect. Let's start. So, first question, what is Berkeley? Is it a proxy, a word list, a VPN, or a cool movie about web pen testing? So you have to choose uh, in your browser. Yes, good job. It's a proxy. Good job, everyone. Okay, so the scout board. Okay, congratulations, B and Joyce. And good job, everyone, for having the answer. Next question How many different main types of uh, XSS do we have? 10, 3, four or two? How many did we see in the slides? Okay, uh, so it's actually free. It's uh, reflected, stored and dumb XSS. Uh, okay, next question. Okay, this was uh, this was a tricky question. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, which uh, Linux distribution is specifically made for pen testing? Is it Ubuntu? Is it Linux Puppy? Is it Linux Mint? Or is it Kali Linux? No, I I think I said it, but uh, there was not a slide, uh, and it was in a video. Then. Yes, great. It's Kali Linux. Okay, uh, so we have Mark on top, then Joy, and then Joyce. Okay, good job, everyone. You're doing very, very good. True or false? So if an application is vulnerable to directory traversal, you will always be able to access slash etc slash pass wd. Be careful, it's a trick, trick question. Is it true or is it false? Okay, it's false. Uh, I said it, uh, but uh, yes, you had to pay a little attention because it's, it was said very, very quickly. It's uh, if you have a Linux server, it's going to work. But if you have another server behind, it's not going to work. You will have to query for other files because for a Windows server, for example, this file does not exist. Okay, good job. Next question. Okay, so Mark is still up, but there's a little fight for the top here. <laughs> it's great. Next question, which of these is not a pen test type? Is it Wi-Fi, internal, external, or blue team? We are talking about pen test type. Okay, great, good job, it's, um, it's blue team. 
And uh, those who said Wi-Fi, we actually can do a Wi-Fi pen test to check if Wi-Fi is uh, secure. Next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of movement up here. Okay, so April is first, and then we have Liza, and then B. Okay, good job, everyone. So which of the following is not good for mitigation? So it's not good. Uh, validate and sanitize input, treat all data as trusted, <laughs> audit the security of a web app before deploying it, or follow OWASP recommendations. So which one of these is not something you should do? Okay, good job. <laughs> So, okay, there's a fight for the top again. So Liza just went first. <laughs> so I'm able to extract data by generating an error with SQL injection. Which type of SQL injection is this? I, I'm very sorry, I think I did not actually explain this, but I will explain it a little uh, after if you need. Is it in band, blind, or out of band? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Seven people got the answer when I did not explain it. Great, so it's in band. Good job. Okay, so there's another fight again. So which of these payloads can be used for cross-site scripting? Is it print, I am an XSS payload? Is it R1 equals one dash dash? Is it script alert one slash script? Or is it Boolean XSS equals true? And we saw it in the demo in the slide. Okay, great. It's this one, script dash script. Okay, not a lot of move here. Great, good job. So the first vulnerability of OWASP top 10 is, okay, this one is maybe a little tricky because we saw the slide only a few minutes. Is it server side request forgery? Is it injection? Is it broken access control? Or is it software and data integrity failures? Oh, good job. It's a broken access control. That's great to have so many people uh, have the correct answer. Good job, everyone. Okay, April, you're on fire. <laughs> okay, next question. Phases of pen test in order are discovering, planning, attacking, reporting, attacking, discovering, planning, reporting, <laughs> planning, discovering, attacking, reporting, or reporting, discovering, planning, attacking. Okay, this one is a little uh, tricky because you have to actually take some time to read the answers. Okay, congrats. That's very, very good. Okay. Next, true or false? Code injection and reverse shell are the same thing. Is it true or is it false? Okay, it's false, good job. It's not the same thing. So code injection is uh, like uh, the vulnerability and reverse shell is what you do to be able to exploit it. You get a reverse shell from your attacking machine to the target. Good job. Okay, it sounds like uh, there's a fight for the top again. Next question. How did we bypass authentication on the box magic? 
Did we steal the session cookie? Did we type default user and password? Did we use SQL injection? Or did the system recognize us automatically? So if you remember well, it's when we were able to uh, log in uh, and we had access to this uh, file upload functionality. Yes, okay, great. So we use SQL injection. Whoa, <laughs> okay, there's a big movement here. Oh, okay. Good job, everyone. Next question. What do we do after we get a user shell on the target? Do we uh, run sudo soup? Do we dance happily and go get some rest? Do we escalate privileges or do we run netcat? Yes, we have to escalate privilege. And we can dance happily after if we want. OK, <laughs> another movement. So Nani's is first. Oh, <laughs> that's huge. Huge movement here. And question 14 out of 15. How did we get the reverse shell on both videos? by using the file upload functionality of the target, by asking politely, by using path traversal vulnerability, or by using the command line. Yes, it's by using the file upload functionality. Okay, good. And last question, uh, remote code execution never happens on famous systems or application. Is it true or is it false? It's false. Uh, we actually saw two examples on WhatsApp and one on WordPress. Good job, everyone. OK, it's time to see who are the winners. So congratulations, Liza. You are the third one. And congratulations, Anania. You are the second one. And the first is Nan. Good job. And we have special mentions to the runners up here. OK, that's great. Congratulations, everyone. Okay, let's move. Okay, so next thing is uh, the resources. So uh, these are uh, the official OWASP pages for cross-site scripting, SQL injection, and directory traversal. And then next question, next, uh, <laughs> next slide is uh, also resources on how uh, to learn. So you have Triacne and Hack the Box. What I usually recommend is to start with Triacne and then go to Hack the Box because uh, Triacne will take you uh, from beginner and Hack the Box is going to be a little more advanced. And you also have more uh, resources on my blog. So let me share these links with you. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I hope it works. Yes, perfect. Uh, so I'm going to take some questions now before the exercise, and after all, I, uh, we will do some exercise. I don't know if we have time. Oh, yes, we have time. That's great. Yeah, you're doing good on time. I've been sort of kind of checking in and keeping up, so making sure that we're staying on track. Perfect. I'll probably do a time check, probably like 15 minutes um, prior to, just to give you a heads up. Sounds good. Thanks. Oops, sorry about this. Oh. 
Okay, no question. So perfect. Let's dive into the exercises. So uh, I'm going to share the links. So the first thing is going to be uh, to go to uh, Port Swigger Academy. Um, you should have an account. If you don't, it's okay. Just uh, register. And up. Let's try. Let's try first with the uh, first one, the reflected one. So I'm going to let you try on your own and uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes for this. But if you have questions, uh, I'm staying here, so don't be shy. Yeah, sure, uh, you can uh, ask general question. Uh, what do we do after reflected? Uh, after reflected, you can do the start one. I'm going to send you the link. Yes, feel free to ask a general question, David, if you, if you want. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, maybe this is... Um, common for other people too um like i already am top two percent on try hack me and like no matter i have my i just got my cissp and i kind of have an odd story i mean i've, I've never really even worked on cybersecurity, so i i really don't know even if it's the best career for me i just i had the opportunity and i uh, was down for health issues so all i did all day was study and and i tried doing something with my time, but I'm, I'm practicing all these exploits and all these kinds of things. And I feel like I'm just still not getting uh, pen testing. Um, I mean, it's literally as difficult as, as it seems like a surgeon operating on you as like, as, there's just so many tools. It's so complex. Um, do you have any recommendations? Like at what point, you know, I can keep doing all these trihackmies on being the top 1%, but I'm, I'm still kind of like stuck. If you just handed me a computer and like said, get into this thing, I would, I would almost be lost other than I guess start with Nmap, but I'd almost be like lost if I can have something by me with like a, like a walkthrough, like a step-by-step, -step, I can kind of click away, but it, it doesn't seem like it's clicking naturally with my brain. Did you have a similar kind of, difficulty is this just the common learning curve for pen testing like like do you have any advice and recommendation if i feel that way uh so uh it it, it it's I, I feel like it's because maybe you don't have uh real context probably so what i would recommend is to uh, try out bug bounty uh, like uh, Hacker One platform and uh, Yes We Act platform. Uh, this is definitely a way to have because uh, so bug bounty programs are uh, programs where uh, businesses are going to uh, put their app out there, and uh, so they are going to ask for uh, the community uh, of these uh, platforms to uh, hack them and uh, see if they find vulnerabilities. So this is a way, you know, to um, 
and to, uh, to, to learn in more real context. But it's also, uh, um, you, you're actually touching a, a, a point here. It's like, uh, I mean, don't get discouraged. It's, uh, it's I, I would say it's normal, you know, to, to have dub sometime in your uh, career and in your uh, learning. So I would say it's, um, it's, it can be discouraging, but um, yeah, try to see a real context. Try to also, uh, you know, talk uh, with uh, other people, uh, learn with other people as well. Like there are also plenty of groups. Uh, like, yes, I, I see just here that someone is uh, looking for a study buddy for ECPPT exam, which is a, a great exam to, uh, to take as well. Uh, so yes, the the fact of studying with people is really uh, is really good. And also, what you could do is uh, try to find an internship because this way you are going to see how it is exactly in real context. And uh, yes, uh, you know we saw the different types of pen tests, so. Don't don't oh, really don't be discouraged. Uh, it's uh, it's a career in which you will uh, learn always, and you will have to learn new things always. And so, uh, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, just don't 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 give up. And uh, and yes. Uh, so it, I'm sorry to, to summarize. Just uh, uh, check out bug bounty platforms, maybe try to find an internship, work with people, talk with uh, people from the community. Uh, there are OWASP chapters, there are uh, uh, a lot of local chapters, uh, there, there's also uh, WISIS, of course, and uh, this way you are able, you know, to, to meet people who have uh, the same, uh, what do you say, uh, you know, taste and the same uh, they want the same thing, you know, so I, I hope it helps. <laughs> okay, so let's see uh, if everyone uh, finished the reflected. I'm going to Uh, show so so as I showed just before, uh, so uh, you know when we have a website, we look around, we see where we could have input here or there. We can check the post. We can, but turns out we have a search form here, so we could try the payload we usually try here, which is this. Sorry. And it works. And it's solved. Okay. So is it okay for everyone? Okay, perfect. So uh you can do the stored one. I share the link just up here. And I'm going to leave you a few minutes. If you have finished the third, the, the stored, you can also work on the SQL injection I'm going to share right now. But, uh, you know, David, what really helped me was um, uh, the internship because I, I really had a, a view of the real context and I was able to actually witness how a pen test works from, uh, you know, the beginning to the end. And uh, so, yes, I, I feel like you really need a real context.
Okay. Uh, maybe three more minutes and I will show you for the stored XFS. Okay, let's solve this one. So again, we have a page, so there's no input here. There's nothing really that we, we could inject something somewhere. So let's have a look at a post. And here we are able to uh, leave a comment. So we can try this again. Oops, sorry. Okay, so it's going. Uh, probably to ask for something. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, maybe not. Yeah. Okay. So let's keep this one and try it this way. Okay, and it's asking for, okay. So let's also skip this one and see if we have to do something else. Or if this should be suffice. Okay, so do we have something? Okay, it worked. So if we go back to the blog, we should see, yes, it's working. We got our alert. So it's uh, stored in the database. So if we actually, can we like, uh, yeah, we have to, but yes, it's been stored in the database.
Okay, any question on the static surface? Uh, so, yeah, uh, yes, uh, well, I've been, so uh, my first, uh, well, I, I've been applying anywhere, uh, everywhere, I mean, and uh, the thing is, uh, I even applied to a senior position just uh, for my first position, just to, you know, sometimes they are going to uh, post only senior positions, but they will actually also hire uh, junior. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, try uh, anywhere, uh, everywhere, and uh, you, you would probably find something. Um, Uh, I, I might have, uh, I will have a list of bug bounty. If you want to uh, DM me on LinkedIn, I will send you also a list of bug bounty. It's also a nice way. And uh, yeah, but uh, apply, uh, ask to your uh, contacts and uh, just like uh, Nikia said, uh, maybe you, you know some people who would let you shadow them or something. That's, a, that's actually a very, very, very good tip. Okay, uh, so the, yes, the SQL injection. And if you're done with the SQL injection, uh, I can send you the uh, directory traversal. Maybe I'm going to launch my, uh, Oh yeah, I don't know if we will have time for the for the directory traversal. So let's just wait. Return. I'm, I'm going to launch my VM. Oops, sorry.
Uh, okay, uh, let's let's try this on the, this browser because for some reason I'm not very successful with my virtual machine tonight. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, I think I'm going to need verb sheets with this. Uh, let's try without, but uh, I might need verb sheets. Uh, let's try this. Okay. So th these are the two dashes we usually use to come on the rest of the query. And then let's try it this way. Okay, so we did not need verb sheet. So it worked and we are logging as a group. Okay, so I guess it's going to be it for today, I'm going to send you in the chat the link if you want to, the other links, if you want to uh, practice at home. So you have the directory travel soul uh, that I just shared. And let me share. 
also the OWASP top 10 room on Triacne, which is pretty great. So this one is to practice the OWASP top 10. And this one is a little more challenging. to work on it at home. Okay, do you have any question before we wrap it up? I'm checking the chat now. Um, I don't see any, and as we do wrap up, Gabrielle, we just wanna say thank you um, for coming and for giving such a detailed overview um, and deep dive into pen testing. Um, we do hope that all of you that attended, we thank you guys as well. Um, earlier we did mention, and I'll drop those in the chat, um, the next event we're gonna be having is a week from today, next Thursday, and it's going to do a deep dive into um, clear jobs. So it goes over jobs that require security clearances, a top secret, a secret clearance, an SCI, and um, sort of kind of how to identify those and the track to put you on if you're looking to go down that path. Um, but also, you know, what type of companies, um, what type of jobs are out there if you have a current security clearance. So I will drop that in the link. In addition, uh, we also mentioned earlier, we are hosting elections for anyone who um, is interested in uh, volunteering to be on our board um, or even just help out with the Mid-Atlantic affiliate. Um, as we go into uh, calendar year 23, uh, Megan mentioned that she will be stepping down and, you know, we're small but mighty few and we're definitely looking for volunteers to help um, you know, with our membership, with coordination of events, and, you know, also let us know what other type of events you guys want to see. This was a really technical um, event, and it was one that had a high attendance, and we see that, um, Gabrielle, if we can, maybe bring you back for, you know, pen testing part two, and we can maybe, you know, break it out and do a tool at a time and really give them, you know, some of that um, even more, uh, more in in depth um, experience for for them to learn more about it if they have interest. Um, and with that, again, we can't thank you enough. Um, we thank everyone who is still here and who's on the call. And if you guys have any questions or if there's anything that um, we missed or if there's anything that you guys would like to um, to see going into next year, please please let us know. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop some of these chats in here right now for you guys. If you're looking, if you haven't, um, you can connect with uh, WESA's Mid-Atlantic on our Twitter. You can collect, connect with us on our website, also um, on LinkedIn. And that's where we post a lot of our stuff, LinkedIn and Twitter. Um, that's kind of where we post a lot of the things that we have going on. And then I'm going to go ahead and post the event for um, the link for the event next week for the clearance, uh, clear jobs event. And with that, it's 832. If there are no more questions um, or any comments, um, I guess. If you guys can, just on a you know quick scale of, of one to five, how how helpful was this for you? Um, five being extremely helpful, um, one not being like I just want to see what do you guys think? What do you do? You guys want more of this? Awesome, great, great, awesome, great, good stuff, good stuff, um, perfect. Great, thank you so much, um, Gabrielle. Again, as you can see, this really helped. <laughs> Out of five is ten, this really helped a lot of people, <laughs> and that's what we were hoping for. You know, we want to be able to bring you guys workshops and 
skill enhancing um, material that can help you further your cybersecurity career. And although we are, you know, women in cybersecurity, again, this is, we have, um, it's all inclusive. We support and want to collaborate with our male allies. Um, we need to partner with you guys. We want to partner with you guys. And so we don't want you to just think that uh, just because we say that we're we sis and women in cybersecurity, um, that you guys are, are not a part of that that um that sisterhood that tribe but also the great organization and the network so it's thursday thursday night football i don't know any football fans if there are any here but um <laughs> the game and kickoff should be going on soon and with that everyone have a good and safe happy friday eve thank you thank you thank you everyone have a great night Again, 